Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo, the Weekend Ramble edition. And what is going to be our topic this week? This week I think we're just going to talk a little bit about continuity and how important is it to the franchise. The franchise or just in general? Uh, let's go with in general. All right, well, I guess we can kind of cover both, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, I wonder why we're bringing up this issue this particular week, <laughs> as if there's something maybe that doesn't uh, have the best continuity ever recently in Star Wars. Perhaps. So there might be some spoilers for Kenobi in this. I don't know that we'll go too much into the actual continuity issues in Kenobi as much, because I, I do have a video actually that should be out today, which will deal with some of the, I don't say continuity issues, but how well the... Uh, fight between Vader and Kenobi blends in with what we know from the original trilogy. Mm. But anyway, like I've said before, continuity to me is king. Like I don't you don't really have a story without continuity, do you? You know, what is a story but a series of events that, you know, where one leads to another where something where A happens and then B happens as a result and then we head to C. And of course there are better ways to do that than just, you know, A happens, B happens, C happens. You're one of your jobs of writing a story, I would say, is trying to hide the fact that everything you're doing is, you know, happening for reasons or it's contrived. It's all coming out of your head. Any type of fictional story is obviously 100% created by, you know, the author, the writer. So I've always viewed it as if you're if you're trying to write, if you want to be a good writer, you need to mask the fact that what you're doing is writing. That you're not just, you know, telling somebody a story that, you know, is true, that has actually happened. And so for me, continuity, when... When you create a story that doesn't have good continuity, when it contradicts itself, it just, for me, it destroys immersion, right? I mean, if, if you sat down and you, you were re- reading a book and in one chapter, you know, this character does, you know, this certain thing, which is huge and it is an important part of the story. And then in the next chapter, it doesn't matter or yeah. he's doing something else that contradicts that. Well, then what's, what's the point of reading this story? What's the point of getting into this if there is no sort of consistency, if it doesn't you know, if one event doesn't, you know, align with the next one. Absolutely. I mean, this isn't even just a problem within the Star Wars franchise. This is something that authors have been having to pay attention to for years. The good ones, the greats, everyone knows how their stories go and that they don't mess them up along the way. Well, yeah, I think that's that's a great point. It, you know, to be a great writer, I, I think you have to have continuity, right? <laughs> I mean, Tolkien didn't change facts from The Hobbit to The Lord of the Rings. His world stayed consistent. That's a perfect example. I mean, look at how complex everything is. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we literally have people who, you know, they go to college, they go to, you know, university, whatever you want to call it, to study Tolkien and his works because they are so comprehensive and complete. And there are, I'm sure there might be some cracks in the seam somewhere. I'm not saying it's flawless. I'm not saying you have to be flawless as a writer where nothing is ever like, well, that, that doesn't perfectly make sense. But. I mean, that is a sign of a, a true great writer, is someone who can continue their story in a way that makes sense with what has happened before, or if you're creating something like the Kenobi series, with what comes after as well. Would people have been happy with the Harry Potter franchise if facts kept getting changed book to book or movie to movie to suit the audience? Well, hasn't that happened with the the new trilogy or new... The Fantastic Beasts. The Beast. Fantastic Beasts, that's what it's called. Haven't and people... fans have pointed it out. Yeah. I mean, there are some great areas that, of course, you can you can change a little bit here and there. But one glaring thing was Professor McGonagall showing up when the timeline didn't add up to why she was there. Because they're like, no, no, it's it's Minerva. I'm like, no, it shouldn't be. <laughs> I, whatever, yeah, and you know? see, that, that's annoying because... For me, because it's just pandering, right? I mean, I'm not I'm not opposed to fan service when it makes sense, right? When it's not blatant and like, you know, when it smacks you in the face, like, look at this, you know. An example I always use is in Rogue One when we see like, you know, Ponda Baba and Dr. Evazan. Like, that was too far. That just smacks me in the face like, oh, look, they just happened to be on Jedha, you know, days before they're going to be in that cantina in A New Hope. And it just feels too much. But... You know, also to go to Rogue One, like, you know, Red Leader, Gold Leader showing up at the Battle of Scarif. Perfect, perfect. That That's that's good fan service because it actually makes sense in the continuity of Star Wars. Of course they would be at the Battle of Scarif, you know. And so that, that's the key. When when McGonagall, McGonagall, that's how we say her name. McGonagall? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a Harry Potter expert here. But, like, when she shows up in that movie, you know it's just there to be like, get you like, oh, oh, my goodness, it's, look who it is, look at the character it is. It's like... That doesn't mean anything to me. Mm-hmm. Unless there's something behind it, just a character showing up doesn't mean something to me. It can be cool. You can think that's, oh, it's cool to see them and all that. But 
when it's so blatantly against the continuity, it actually detracts more than it adds anything, at least for me. Right, I mean, I, I know in the, in the latest Harry Potter movie, you even had issues with the plot when they had the little, I can't remember its name, the little deer, and nobody seemed to realize that the deer was a zombie. <laughs> trust the deer, everyone, we trust the deer. We we shouldn't bother voting, we just trust the deer, even just though it looks kind of sick. Yeah, just trust the sickly undead deer, why not? Like, that's... See, that, that's the problem for me. Like, when characters, when things happen in a story that just don't make sense, I, it rips you out. And, again, the sign of a good writer is someone who doesn't have those inconsistencies. You can you can enjoy a story with inconsistency. I'm not saying you can't, like, just have fun with it and enjoy it. There always seems to be this argument, well, just why do you let that bother you? Like, why do you, why can't you just let that go and enjoy the story? Because a good story to me is one that's consistent. Well, if something makes such a jarring change or anything like that, that that hits you and you're like, it just takes you out of the moment. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Then it's it's not keeping that immersion that that for especially in the fantasy genre that really draws you in and keeps you there. Yeah, absolutely. That's what fantasy and you know science fiction, you know sci-fi fantasy, Star Wars is essentially that. Mm-hmm. And so if it really wants to hook you, it needs to take you to that other galaxy and keep you there and keep it consistent, make me feel like. Yeah, this is a long time ago in a in a galaxy that actually existed. Right. It's it's almost also with the, the Game of Thrones franchise. While the books in the movie in the TV show were different, people loved that it stayed very consistent until the last season, and that's what everybody got mad. Why? Because the consistency got thrown it, yeah. out. The payoff was stolen. Yeah, these characters suddenly weren't acting like they had. And look, it does have other problems in some of the later. The first few seasons are fantastic. When the book when they run out of book things start to go south. And then in season eight, you're off the rails, right? It's just... Totally off the rails. It feels so inconsistent with what it has been. And just these contrived, just constant contrivances happen mm-hmm. in the final season. And what was great about Game of Thrones, what I really like about both the books and the series, is how it feels like these are just these are just people going about their lives and they just things happen because of what they do. They're, right. The contrivances, like I said before, a good writer can can mask their contrivances. They can just make it feel mm-hmm. like these characters are going about their lives and things are happening because of what these characters are doing. Instead, we had like glaring p- plot problems, like all of a sudden Bran becoming the king when he was like gone ninety percent of the time, and and even said he didn't want to be king. Danny going crazy, like oh, we God, didn't really yeah, see just, much lead up to that. Just all of a sudden, last season snapped. they're like make it go off the walls really fast. Spoilers for Game of Thrones. For those few who maybe haven't at this seen point, it. <laughs> but yeah, there's a new series coming. So yeah, I a couple new. Isn't John Snow getting his own series? Yeah, I mean, they just started changing characters to suit what they wanted to do with their plot. Exactly, and it, and it really, and you wonder why there was a giant fan exodus of, of anger towards it. You you just hit the nail on the head. Like when you have to change characters or previous events to fit the plot that you or the story you want to tell now, you're you're done. You're shot. That's that's not a sign of a good writer. A good writer can work within the confines, can work within the established, be it lore or story, whatever it is. That is what a good writer does. A good writer doesn't go, well, you know, I want to tell this story, but that doesn't work with it. And I need this character to act mm-hmm. a completely different way in order to tell my story. So I'm just going to change it anyway, because I want to tell my story. And this is the same thing they're doing with the new Lord of the Rings. <laughs> well, with, with that, it's kind of strange because they have so little material to actually work with. I mean, they can basically work with the appendixes from... Right, but at the same time, they're trying to take still characters well, no. that you do know and to go, let's let's do this with her. I don't and disagree it, with you, yeah. And it just seems nuts. Yeah, I think you're talking about like Galadriel being like, you know, a warrior princess or something. Now, I don't even know what in the world they're going to do with her. Like, it's the same thing. I mean, even they've even acknowledged, the showrunners have even acknowledged, like, well, we want to, we think it should reflect modern times. Like... Well, it's not modern times. It's not modern times for one. For two, it's an established story. For three, people like the fact that it is an established story well, that doesn't even, reflect modern times. You even made the comment because you know more about Lord of the Rings than I do about there's going to be like the pre hobbits in there and hobbits shouldn't even be in. No, there are no hobbits mentioned in the Second Age, and yet uh, they're going to put them in there because, because people, people know love, hobbits. People so, love hobbits. And hobbits yeah. are cute, innocent and they, reflections of. It's see that yeah. to me that just feels like a crutch. Like if you can't tell the story without changing the story, maybe you aren't the one to be telling the story. There are right? stories that could be told, and Certainly. they just are going to tell what they want to tell and bend the story until they get what they want. Yeah, that's like I said. That's my my problem. Like it's not that you can't enjoy it for what it is, but when when I have to be told like, well, you shouldn't think too hard about it. Well, then for me that 
kind of ruins the story because I like the intricacies. I like the connections. That's one of the reasons I love to watch a good story or read a good story or whatever it is. I think some of the best best movies, best books, best things don't dumb down to their audience. They elevate their work knowing that the audience Perfect. is going yes. to understand or will figure it out. Yes. Elevate the elevate the work. Don't like dumb it down, don't That's change insulting. it, don't It is insulting. I made a video the other day how it insults your intelligence because they're just either you know, not to get into specific. I mean, there are there are moments in the Kenobi series where literally the show or the characters in the show tell you you shouldn't basically concern yourself with this because of this excuse. And the excuse itself isn't very good. And so, again, you know, I, I hate to keep harping on it, but the sign of a good writer is the ability to tell a coherent, consistent story. Not one who bends everything from previous parts or other parts to just suit what they want to do. All right. Well, I guess that's all we got for you this time. So take to the comments below and tell us what you think about continuity, consistency. Is that important to you? Do you really need it to make sense? Or are you someone who could just watch it and enjoy it for what it is? Whatever the case may be, you know what to do. Leave your comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.